Avenger. The road to crime ends in a trap that justice sets. Crime does not pay. sworn enemy of evil is actually Jim Brandon, a famous biochemist. Through his numerous scientific experiments, Brandon has perfected several inventions to aid him in his crusade against crime as the Avenger. Most remarkable of these inventions is the highly secret diffusion capsule, which cloaks him in the black light of invisibility. Brandon's assistant, the beautiful Fern Collier, is the only one who shares his secrets and knows that he is the man the underworld fears as the Avenger. And now, the Avenger and murder hits the jackpot. Five cents for the next five minutes, please. Operator, operator, please don't cut me off. Five cents for the next five minutes. Please. But I'm still waiting for my party. He was busy on another wire. Five cents. Operator, the... I can't leave this booth to get any change. Two men are trailing me. This is a matter of life and death. Operator. Operator. She thinks I'm a crank. Well, I'll just have to take a chance and get some change. All right, Judson. Outside. March her and let you have it in the back right now. Hank, I... The big guy's waiting outside in his car. Go ahead. Hank, what is this? Shut huh? up. Get in the car, Judson. In the back. Hello, Judson. Griff, tell this gorilla of yours. You sit here in the back with us, Hank. Sammy will drive. Okay. Step on it, Sammy. Cut across that back road to Keystone Meadows. Now, uh, what were you saying, Judson? So you're taking me to Keystone Meadows? Yeah, that's a nice deserted spot. I gotta keep you away from telephones, Judson. I didn't talk to anybody, Griff. Honestly, I didn't. That Secret Service man was busy on another line. I, I... know you didn't get to him, Judson. Hank would have blasted you right through the door if you had. But you can't blame us if we don't take any more chances with you. Well, I'm not going to beg for mercy, Griff. Uh-huh. I won't give you the satisfaction. You admit you were all set to double cross us. Yes. It was the only way out that I could see. This latest racket of yours forced my hand. I hadn't bargained for that. Now, who tipped you off, Judson? Nobody. I stumbled onto your setup in the factory today. Oh, that's too bad. It doesn't give me any choice. It's you or me. Here's a place, Sammy. Turn in here. Stop over there near that clump of trees. Well, Judson, this is the end of the line for you. Okay. Get out, Judson. You might as well go through his clothes, Hank. If we can make this look like robbery, so much the better. Right. Turn out the headlights, Sammy. I'll keep my flash on them. He's well healed, all right. This wall of... Hurry it up, Hank. We haven't got all night. Okay. He's clean. Well, what are you waiting for, then? Give it to him. Yes, Inspector, that's 
Max Judson, the real estate man, all right. Ah, uh, did you know him, Jim? Oh, you might say we had a nodding acquaintance. He used to play tennis at my club. Well, what makes you think this was a gang killing, Inspector? As far as I know, Judson was always on the level. Well, people who live right don't often come to such a bad end, Jim. Four bullets in the chest out in Keystone Meadows. Yes, but he was robbed, too. Don't forget that. Uh, there's no doubt about it, Jim. This was a gang murder. Now, uh, here. Take a look at this. We found it in his left hand. Mm, a nickel. Yeah. Well, according to the best tradition of the underworld, a nickel symbolizes the fate of a double-crosser. That's it, Jim. You mind if I keep this nickel, Inspector? Uh, I suppose you want it for your coin collection? Well, that's right. It's a buffalo, 1922. I haven't got any of those. Okay, take it. I don't suppose Judson's heirs will sue you. <laughs> Thanks, Inspector. Well, where do you think we should start on this, Jim? Oh, a lot of routine checking will have to be done first. Uh, why don't you go to work on that? Uh, what about you? I've got a hunch that may lead us to the motive for Judson's murder. Oh, well, suppose you let me in on it. I'll need a little time to work on it. Come around to my lab at 4 o'clock this afternoon, Inspector. Maybe I'll have something more definite by then. Here are 200 more nickels, Jim. Oh, good. Uh, put them down on the table here, Fern. You didn't get them mixed up, did you? No. And this pocket full is from the grocer. Mm-hmm. And this is from the news dealer. And, uh, oh, these are from the druggist. Good. And all these rolled ones from the bank. That brings our total up to 500. Now we can go to work. Jim, I wish you'd tell me what we're going to do with all these nickels. We're going to give each one of them a chemical test, Fern. A chemical test? Yes. I think we'll find that a percentage of these nickels are counterfeit. <laughs> You're right on time. Yeah, uh, well, I hope you've had better luck than I have, Jim. I haven't been able to get anywhere on Judson's death. Jim thinks he's found the motive for it, Inspector. He has. Yeah, what is it, Jim? Counterfeit money. I think Judson's murder can be tied up with a racket that specializes in counterfeit nickels. Counterfeit nickels? Well, that couldn't be much of a racket, Jim. Wouldn't be worth it. To the contrary, Inspector. It would be a very smart racket and a very profitable one. Huh? How do you figure that? Well, according to a little preliminary test we made this afternoon, about one-tenth of the nickels in circulation in this neighborhood, at least, are counterfeit. Well, if that's so, why haven't the banks discovered it? Because these fake nickels are so well turned out, it's impossible to tell them from the real ones. Well, here, Inspector. Mm -hmm. Take a look at these two nickels. Now, one is counterfeit, and one is good. Can you detect any difference? Uh... Well, they look exactly the same to me. Uh, they not only look the same, but they weigh the same. 77.16 grains. Then how can you be sure they're fakes? I've given them a chemical test. Uh -huh. A nickel struck at a government mint contains 75% copper and 25% nickel. These counterfeits contain lead for weight, zinc for color, and powdered glass to give them a ring. Well, that's the reason they've been able to fool everybody. Uh, but where's the profit in it, Jim? Oh, about four and a half cents on each nickel. These fakes could be stamped out at a cost of about half a cent apiece. Uh, say, if they were put out in large enough quantities, that would add up to a sizable racket. I should say so when you realize there are $295 million worth of nickels in circulation. For instance, if a counterfeiter could supply just 1% of them, just 1% for even a short period, he would stand to clean up several million dollars. Of course, I think this racket is still localized. But unless we nip it in the bud, it won't take too long for it to expand. Well, any idea who might be behind it? Yes. Oh, that is, I think I know who made these coins. I want you to check on it for me. With pleasure. Who is it? An old fellow by the name of Pop Walters. He's a chronic counterfeiter, the kind that just can't leave the business alone. And he's by far the best artist in the line. But the last I heard of Pop, he was safely tucked away in a federal penitentiary. Well, if Walters made these nickels, Jim, we'll find him. Give me a couple of hours on this. Inspector White. 
Oh, yes, Inspector. Uh, I got a line on Pop Walters, Jim. Good. No, it isn't so good. He was released from the federal pen eight months ago. They figured he was too old and feeble to do any more harm, so they sent him to a rest home. Oh, where? Upstate. But he disappeared from the home three weeks after he arrived. I guess that means he's back in operation, all right. Yes. And this time, I don't think he's working alone. He's probably hitched up with some local gang that has the proper setup to unload the nickels. Anyway, Pop Walters wasn't a killer. Well, I'll put some of my best men on the job right away, Jim. I'll be able to locate him. Okay. I'll go to work on the other angle. Huh? What other angle? The gang that's unloading the nickels. Oh. All right. Well, keep in touch with me, Jim. So long. So long, Inspector. Suckers won't take much away from this new slot machine, Hank. How much does it pay off? Only about 20%. Just enough to keep them coming. I, uh, I think you're going to run into some trouble installing them new machines, Griff. Uh, what are you giving me? Our customers will take them and like them. No, nope. we're in for some headaches, Griff. Yeah. Now that Judson's gone, some of the customers that occupy store space he owned are stepping out of line. Oh? How? Three of them had out-of-order signs on their slot machines today. Well, what did you do about it? I tore down the signs and told them to lay off. But it didn't scare them none. Judson's dead and they figure they can't be dispossessed now. Two of them had the nerve to tell me to get the machines out of the place. Well, we better go to work on this right away. Those guys are dealing with Griff Catlin now, and I guess it's about time I let them know who's boss. Tell Sammy to get the car out, Hank. Right. I got a little job for you two boys. Okay, Sammy, it's that store on the corner. Keep close to the sidewalk and slow down. Right here. Here's a present for you, Mr. Ballard. Okay, step on it. Ah, that'll teach him. Next stop is a 10th and Maple, Sammy. We got another package to deliver. <laughs> much left of this store, Inspector. Were there any customers inside when the bomb was thrown? No. No, Ballard, the proprietor, was the only casualty, Jim. Oh, looks like we're right in the middle of an old-time gang war. Yeah, we haven't been up against anything like this in years. Got any ideas, Jim? Yes. I think there's a definite connection between this bombing and Max Judson's murder. Well, how do you figure that? Judson owned several dozen corner stores in this city, and this was one of them. Protection racket, maybe? Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. But I still can't figure out where the counterfeit nickel fits into all this. Uh, yeah, we're up a blind alley on Pop Walters. The old fella seems to have vanished into thin air. Keep your men working on it, Inspector. Meantime, Fern and I will get busy on a little field work. <laughs>
back to the Avenger and murder hits the jackpot. Gosh, Jim, we lost again. Put another nickel in, Fern. I'll get some more change. All right. Oh, I don't think it's possible to win on these slot machines. How'd you do, Fern? Jim, you're just wasting money on these things. So far, we've put in over $10 worth of nickels in various machines and only got $2 back. Mm Mm-hmm. That's about the average payoff, Fern. Only the suckers expect to win. Put one more nickel in it. And then we'll move on to the next door. Okay. Oh, Jim, look, I won. <laughs> Not the jackpot, though. Oh, help me gather up the nickels, Jim. Uh-huh. Oh, that was a 20-nickel win, friend. Here, put them in this pocket. I'm keeping the nickels we won separated from the ones we got in change from the storekeepers. Oh, I'm tired of these games, Jim. Can't we go home now? Not yet. We have three more stores to cover. Then we'll go back to the lab and find out how many counterfeit nickels we've collected. Come on. Have you finished with the test, Jim? Yes, Fern. Eight out of ten of those nickels we collected in the slot machine stores were counterfeit. They're seeping into circulation through those stores, then. Right. Jim... It doesn't seem possible that all those storekeepers could be crooked. Well, it doesn't necessarily follow that they are, Fern. But if they're handing out fake nickels for change, they must be. No, there's another angle to it. Those slot machines are serviced by a fellow by the name of Griff Catlin. How did you find that out? One of the storekeepers admitted it. Griff's men deliver the nickels each morning, and the storekeeper pays for them in bills. Well, now we're getting someplace. Old Pop Walters is probably working for Griff Catlin, who has the perfect setup for unloading the nickel. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But, well, how did Max Judson fit into it? Judson evidently forced his tenants to install the machines. He probably made a deal with Griff Catlin to share in the profits. But why should they kill him, then? Maybe Judson didn't know anything about the counterfeiting angle at first. Thought it was a straight business proposition... Then somebody made a slip and Judson got wise. He threatened to have the law on Griff, or maybe have the machines taken out of his stores, so Griff had him murdered. Well, the case is solved, then. Shall I call the inspector? Not yet. There's one piece missing in this puzzle. What, Jim? I still have to find out how Griff Catlin manages to get the lead and zinc for those phony nickels. Well, how can we do that? Well, he must have a business front of some kind so that he can buy those metals without incurring suspicion. We'll have to make a survey of the big factories and check the metal situation in each one of them. The Wells Manufacturing Company is on the level, Fern. Production and purchases check here at the Highland Mills. Progress Cutlery has a clean bill of health. You can check Western Plateware off the list, Fern. Everything's in order at the Garfield plant. That novelty toy factory is the place we're looking for, Fern. Oh, good. I was beginning to give up. How can you be sure, Jim? All their toys are made of plastic, but according to the trucking report I have on them, they receive a weekly shipment of lead and zinc. Well, did you see anything in there that looks suspicious? Yes. They manufacture toys, all right, but their output is very small in comparison to the size of the factory. It's just possible that the counterfeiters operate in the basement, because there's only one door leading down there from the factory, and it was bolted from the inside. Well, there's a big double door there in the back. Yes, That's big enough to allow a good-sized truck through. Well, what do you think we ought to do, Jim? It's my guess that the actual counterfeiting goes on at night when the factory's closed. We'll have to come back later this evening to verify that. In the meantime, how about some dinner, Jim? I didn't say anything about skipping lunch, but I'm (laughs) famished. Okay, Fern. How about a nice big steak with all the trimmings? Looks 
looks as if your hunch was right, Jim. Yes. There are some lights in that basement, all right. The shutter of that one window is entirely closed. Can you see anything, Jim? Mm, no, it isn't open far enough. How do you plan on getting in? Oh, I can, Jimmy, open that window easily enough. What do you want me to do, Jim? Go up to the drugstore on the corner and wait for me. If I don't join you there in an hour, call the inspector. All right. Jim, do you think this is a job for the Avenger? I don't know yet, Fern. I'll go in there and get the lay of the land first. Now, run along. It's time I went to work. Come in, young fella. Who are you? A friend of Griff's. Oh. Hey, do I know you, son? No, but I've heard a lot about you, Pop. You have? Who from? Oh, Griff and the boys. Judson liked you, too. Judson? Don't think I know him. Well, he was in business with Griff. Hey, come closer, son, so I can get a gander at you. My eyes ain't what they used to be. <laughs> Your eyes are okay, Pop. Those nickels you're making are better than ever. Yeah, yeah, they are, aren't they? <laughs> I sure fooled them treasure guys, didn't I? I'll say you did. <laughs> old Pop Walters is through, they said. Too old and too feeble to do any harm. <laughs> Here I am, turning out better nickels than the mint. <laughs> nope, old Pop ain't through yet. Not by a long shot. <laughs> Why, you'll be engraving bills one of these days, Pop. Not me. Nickels is safer. People in banks examine bills close, but nobody's suspicious of nickels. Why, that's right. You make them, Pop, and Griff will unload them, huh? That's the ticket, son. We're branching out already. Did you know that? Why, no, I didn't. I sure. Look, look. Uh -huh. There's, there's $5,000 worth of nickels over there, right over there, ready to be tracked out to Avon City tomorrow. Well, at that rate, you'll be a millionaire one of these days. Oh, not me. When you get to be my age... Many don't mean anything to you. All I want is to stay out of jail and be left alone to do my work. Oh, with you, it's art for art's sake, huh? Eh? What's that, son? Uh, uh, nothing, Pop. Say, wouldn't it be easier to stamp out all the nickels from one plate? Oh, no, no, no. That would give them all the same date. The banks would get wise to that in no time. Well, what dates do you cover? Well, my specialty is the buffalo nickel, son. So I run most of them from 1913 uh, to 1936. Uh, how did you manage to get all those plates made so soon? You've only been out of the penitentiary eight months. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. I'll tell you something. Yeah? Listen to me close now. Mm -hmm. I had nearly all these plates buried, son. All I had to do was dig them up and go to work. Say, that's pretty smart. Say, Pop, got a 22 nickel on you? No. Only had a few of those. Uh-huh. Well, what was that noise? Well, I guess that's Griff. He generally comes in around this time. This is a job for the Avenger. Hello, Pop. How's everything going? Oh, fine, Griff, fine. Well, we're going to move you over to Avon City tomorrow, Pop. Hmm, Avon City? What for? Things are getting hot here, that's all. Well, yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. Say... Them treasury men ain't on to us already, are they? <laughs> no, not yet. Ah, that's good. Oh, oh I say, Griff. Uh-huh? This young fellow's been here. He's waiting to see you. What young fellow? Where is he? It's mighty funny. He was here a minute ago, sitting right on that stool, talking to me. Well, you're loony, Pop. There's nobody here. It's lucky for you there isn't. Well, I can't make it out. You know I wouldn't have anybody meet me here. Nobody but you and me and some of the boys know what's going on in this place. And the Avenger, Griff. He's in on this little secret, too. The Avenger? I told you somebody was in here, Griff. You double-crossed me, Pop. Oh, no, Griff. I, I didn't let him in. No, I didn't let him in, honest. You double-crossed yourself, Griff, when you murdered Judson. Griff, you didn't murder anybody, did you? Where is he? I'll find that Avenger and plug him full of lead. If it's the last thing I do. You're good at that. But this isn't the night for it. Oh, and my gun. The Avenger knocked it out of your hand, Griff. Take it up, Pop, and cover him. 
Griff Catlin is wanted for at least three murders. All right. I don't hold with them that kills. Stick up your hands, Griff. And if you make one move toward Pop, the Avenger will knock you out cold. Don't you worry. I'll wing him if he tries to get away, Avenger. Good. We won't have long to wait. Inspector White will be here soon. He'll be glad to take Griff off your hands, Pop. White boys will get you for this, Pop. Bah! And you too, Avenger. Save your breath, Griff. When the judge gets through with you and your gang, the whole lot of you won't be worth one of Pop's fake nickels. <laughs> Catlin confessed? No, Fern, he hasn't, but uh, as a matter of fact, he doesn't have to. We got the whole story out of Hank and Pop. Did Griff murder Judson, uh, just as you suspected? Well, he ordered Hank to do it, which is practically the same thing. And he was behind those bombings, too, I suppose. Yes, that was his method of keeping his customers in line. Well, Jim, I know you tumbled to the slot machine angle because it was a possible way of unloading the fake nickel... What led you to suspect that the nickel in Judson's hand was a counterfeit? Fern, that nickel in Judson's hand was a 1922 nickel. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it just happens that the men didn't make any nickels that year. They didn't? Why not? Well, there were plenty of nickels in circulation at that time, so the men took a holiday and didn't coin a single nickel. Oh, I guess Pop Walters was older and feebler than he thought. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, he'd only printed a few of them when he discovered his mistake. But somehow, Judson got hold of one of them, and that's what put him wise to the counterfeiting racket Griff was operating through the slot machines. Oh, my, it's almost three Mm o'clock. I'll have to run long. Well, say, what's in that heavy suitcase? You can hardly lift it off the floor. Mm, It's full of nickels, Jim. All the good ones we accumulated in our field work. I'm going to unload them at the nearest bank. Characters, names, places, and plots used in the Avenger program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a thought. A thought. A thought. Remember, listen for another adventure of... The Avenger. The Avenger. 